um, when you do business there is no guarantee that you will profit except you engage by certain principles am I right on that two people can engage the same business and one person will end up in a loss a disappointing loss whereas another person will profit from the same business so the problem may not be the business itself but how it was approached am I right on that so there is a way you can engage scripture there is a way you can engage the Word of God that it looks important and it's not able to produce the kind of result that God said should produce be produced from it but there is a profitable way of engaging scripture and this is our consideration for this morning hallelujah Amen. help us again Holy Spirit in Jesus matchless name we pray Amen. the Bible says the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding unto the simple the entrance of his word gives light beyond an information it gives light and understanding unto the simple now let me recap on something that perhaps a number of you may have heard me say and this is very important for our understanding this morning that the bible essentially contains promises principles and prophecies if you're writing you may want to write that down every time you open the bible you are interacting with three dimensions of spiritual realities number one promises number two principles and number three prophecies promises represent the commitment of god to the saints the commitment it's a compendium of god's commitment all that he has said he will be and do to you when certain conditions are met they are called promises number two principles the modus operandi of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom as revealed in scripture helps you to walk in wisdom and to walk effectively within the kingdom remember i told us that when you encounter jesus jesus is the entrance the authorized system of entrance into the kingdom but now that you are in the kingdom you must know how to function in the kingdom and that is the assignment of the principles of the kingdom we call them the mysteries of the kingdom and then number three because the believers walk is a journey are we together that journey officially begins when you encounter jesus but there is a prophetic destiny within the earth our life now and even beyond so the bible contains prophecies prophecies that stand as a compass guiding us to understand times and seasons within the frame of our work on earth and even beyond this time this is all that you find in scripture so when i open my bible i'm not just reading verses and chapters and books they may be arranged in various forms chronologically or by books or whatever it is but the most important thing is to know that every time you open your bible you are encountering the promises of god the principles of the kingdom and the prophecies that guide the believer's destiny are we together this is very important so the bible says ephesians 1 and verse 3 ephesians 1 and verse 3 the third verse of the first book of Ephesians. Thank you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. Take note now. Hath blessed us with how many? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. This is what God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ the bible tells us clearly that the believer has been blessed but we have been blessed with realities that are beyond the physical realm hallelujah our assignment is to understand the dynamics and the spiritual technology of transporting these all spiritual blessings to now reside within our domain 
are we together whether or not you are able to walk in this reality does not change the fact that you have been blessed with not some not a few not many but all spiritual blessings hallelujah you know what this means every equipping every tool that is required for you to live an effective and a victorious christian life when jesus hung upon the cross and said it is finished the meaning of that statement was that whatever stood as a barrier between you and stepping into your relationship with god number one and then actualizing your prophetic destiny had been taken out of the way now that is a spiritual reality it does not mean that it will find expression physically in your life there is a whole dynamics for converting spiritual realities to become true in our lives for instance the bible says right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but nobody was saved from that reality are we together nobody's sins was forgiven because the lamb was slain from the foundations of the earth he had to come as the word incarnate emmanuel to dwell with us walk for 33 years hung upon the tree physically that's why when he came he started looking for where it was written concerning him so that he would act out in keeping with the prophecy that had been written so when he found it for instance in luke chapter 4 he said today is this scripture fulfilled in your ears and he began to walk in keeping the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 says the spirit of the lord is upon me when he came he started finding out what was written concerning me when he found it he limited his life to that which was written are we together and it was the physical dying on the cross shedding his blood literally that translated to the salvation of men so just because we have been given this spiritual blessings according to ephesians 1 verse 3 it does not automatically i think this is where most people in church and in the body of christ make a mistake when they find truths written in scripture they believe that just because it is written it means automatically it is true in my life that is not so if i write you a check of a million naira that is true i'm not scamming you that is a real check is that true but you cannot carry you may not carry that check to a mall are we together and then pick products and say listen i'm holding a check i'm not a fraud i really have money you see that with respect to the dynamics of exchange within that mall you do not have money no matter how you convince yourself you can enter there even you can staple the check on your chest so that everybody sees you but you will be surprised that you might be arrested you will have to go to the bank am i right on that so if you do not know how to convert your check into cash are we together now to make the money deposited in your account here and now then you can now use it for transactions so there are many believers who are carrying this spiritual check I am healed i am blessed i'm not a non-entity and yet they go to the exchange system of life and life says we are not aware that you are holding all of this and we are wondering are you saying god lied no it is the dynamics of converting spiritual realities to become true in your life this is my assignment this morning hallelujah yes i have seen well-meaning believers live defeated lives and in many cases the more the defeats the more you see them quoting scriptures now this is not wrong but it's just that we do not understand that there is a difference between the prophetic speakings of god and their experiential manifestations so when god speaks you see he speaks from his realm god can look at you and say you are already blessed you are already lifted that's how god speaks he speaks to men like he's speaking to himself but you need to know how to capture that reality and convert it within the context of your domain so that you can walk in victory if you've understood me so far say amen, amen. hallelujah so we're learning how to engage the light god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places settle it for a fact whether you have been 
a, an experiential beneficiary of that truth or not does not change the fact that this is the reality that God has made available for you. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we read 11 and 12. Paul again was speaking to the church in Corinth. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God. To what end? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Let's read the B part again. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Very profound scripture. There are things God wants us to know that he's already given us. And he gave the Holy Spirit to guide us. To help us know that there are things we have been given. We'll look at one more scripture. It's a scripture that has ministered so deeply to me. Second Peter chapter 1, 2 to 4. Second Peter 1, 2 to 4. Hallelujah. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Say amen, first of all. Then it now says, through the knowledge. Notice it never said through knowledge. Through the knowledge. Definite article. There is an exact body of truth that administers grace and peace unto you. He calls it the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, reading to 4. According as his divine power hath given us. Do you see it there again? How many things? One more time. All things that part unto life and godliness Peter is such an intelligent apostle he breaks it down to let us know that the things we have been given sorts our living here and then it sorts godliness our walk with God it would have been a risk if we were only given the things that pertain unto life that means your supplies without anything that gives you an edge spiritually or where God would sort out our spiritual lives and then leave us with no help physically but apostle peter says that god gave us all things that pertain to life your well-being as far as your sojourn in the earth is concerned and then godliness your work with god but again he says access to these things in experience comes through knowledge through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue verse 4 whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises this is another name for the spiritual blessings in heavenly places peter gives it another expression that they are exceedingly great and they are precious promises that by these we might be partakers in experience of the divine nature that means if you claim i am born again eternal life is at work in me the life of god is in me there are promises that you must access and engage by faith are we together that will make your life a proof indeed that you are a recipient of eternal life that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world lost so three scriptures all attesting and confirming the fact that God had given us settle this as a believer you want to engage the light of scripture for your profiting you have to know that these realities have already been finished in Christ they are not about to happen God is not about to send them no these are realities when Jesus said it is finished Believe it for a fact that he meant what he said. Hallelujah. He went to Hades, the place of the dead, defeated hell, sin, Satan, the grave. The Bible says he resurrected by the glory of God on the third day. Hallelujah. And Paul, in his Pauline epistle, intelligently, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 2, he began to describe our current position in light of all that christ has done i hope you know that 
Jesus Christ is the epicenter as far as our pursuit and everything around the kingdom is concerned. You cannot excel in the kingdom outside of your relationship and your partnership with Jesus. So the beginning, the alpha and omega of the entire span of the believer's journey is Jesus. Everything we have, everything we are, everything we're evolving into is because of all that he is and all that he's done. Hallelujah. So if I ask you what gives you confidence that you will not fail in life, if you just say I come to church, uh, that's fair, but that's not that's from a standpoint of spiritual intelligence. That's not an intelligent answer. Are we together? Your partnership and your oneness with the Lord Jesus Christ is the basis for everything and anything good that will ever happen to you. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Paul again was speaking to us and he said, Finally, brethren, be strong. I wish we could see this from Amplified. I like Amplified's rendition. He says, Be strong in the Lord. Thank you. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. So your empowerment is a product of your union. He that is joined to Christ, the Bible declares, has become one spirit. There are two profound implications of redemption or the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Number one is that that has brought the believer to a standpoint of union. You are now united with Christ by his spirit. Hallelujah. So you see that captured in the Pauline epistle, Ephesians particularly. He uses the word together, raised up together with him, raised up together. That together mentality must be embedded within your spirit. That for as long as you are in Christ, you are never alone again, together, together. You can fail alone, but you and him cannot fail together. You can be defeated alone. But you and the Lord Jesus Christ by his spirit cannot be defeated together. That begins to give you a superior orientation as you dare life. Together, raised up together with him. And then the Bible says number two is our positional advantage. That on account of who Christ is and what he's done, we've been elevated to a position seated with him, the Bible says, far above thrones dominions principalities powers every name that is named not only in this world but even that which is to come these are spiritual realities you must believe by faith and engage by knowledge to walk in the experience of that means the most defeated believer and the most effective believer have the same heritage in christ let me repeat myself the most defeated believer today right now and the most effective and victorious believer have the same heritage as far as the provisions that come through redemption is concerned the difference is the ability to engage the light for another person he may have wallowed around ignorance giving all kinds of excuses to his detriment and then another person like we said yesterday has taken the responsibility to contend for enlightenment so settle it for a fact that scripture is true that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ and then Peter calls them exceeding great and precious promises let me walk you through at least two or three of these promises so that you are aware. Do not forget, please keep it at the back of your mind, that we said the Bible contains promises. Remember, God's commitment to you. Number two, it contains principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, and it contains prophecies. Let's look at a few promises that we have been given according to Scripture. Number one, I will just pick a few in no particular order. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2, we considered that yesterday. But let's look at it just as a case study. We are sampling a few promises that are in scripture for the profiting of the believer if and when engaged. 
it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God this is God speaking now to Abraham to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above how many all nations does that include America does that include UK anywhere at all above all the nations of the earth verse 2 all these blessings shall come on thee all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord and then it begins to read on let's 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 look at a few verse 3 again blessed shall thou be in the city blessed shall thou be in the field blessed shall be the fruit of your body the fruit of your ground the fruit of your cattle now we can stop there these are exceeding great and precious promises but they are spiritual realities you can read them and never walk in them all through your lifetime god still remains true it is your your not understanding how to engage the light that makes him look like a liar in your life the bible says let god be true and every man a liar can we consider a few more Isaiah chapter 43 1 and 2 Isaiah 43 1 and 2 but now said the Lord that created thee O Jacob he that formed thee O Israel he says fear not for I have redeemed you you see how God speaks I have called thee by name don't assume you understand what that scripture is until you meditate upon it if your name is Joseph and I call you Joseph I don't expect Joseph and Mary coming I didn't call two people I singled you out as a sign of honor and as a sign that I am aware that you are here so when the Bible says I have called you by name out of the over 8 billion people on earth that he knows your name and he's that meticulous about your destiny you are not just a number upon the earth I have called you by name then he says you are mine when thou passes through waters I will be with you now hold on but the truth is that if we are to be honest our lives in many regards do not look like God is with us yet this is this is an exceeding great and precious promise that every time you see waters boisterous storms be sure that I will be with you does that look like what happened to the disciples when Jesus was at work when there was that storm remember he was there but he was sleeping it was their responsibility to wake him are we together you would think his presence in the boat will, will calm the storm no as for him he was sleeping because if that boat got filled another miracle would have happened he probably would have vanished so he was secured in himself remember he was that's why they, they tapped him they said care us not that we perish not you we know you have a way of delivering yourself but as for us you see that now and he got up and rebuked their unbelief and then he told the wind be still let's finish up when you pass through the rivers it will not overflow you and when you walk through fire nigeria fire thou shall not be burned so if you are being burned don't just say god where are you no the responsible question is what am i not doing there was a rich young ruler who came to jesus and said good master what must i do to inherit eternal life he was a responsible young man he didn't say give me eternal life i take responsibility what role do i have to play you see that now let's look at a few exceeding great and precious promises job 22 29 job 22 29 when men are cast down then thou shalt say there is a lifting up and he shall save the humble person this is God's commitment to you but whether it happens in your life or not is a different thing altogether hallelujah Psalm 91 the popular Psalm Psalm 91 let's go to verse 3 
Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the faller and the noisome pestilence. Next verse. He says he shall cover thee with his feather and under his wing shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Verse 5. Thou shall not be afraid. Hold on. It's time to confess now. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Remember how you reacted when you had that dream? And yet there is such a promise in the Bible that you should not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness our darkness again nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday seven a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by <laughs> i don't know about you but if i see one thousand people falling by my side it would be unwise to just stand there one thousand is too much three or four is enough for you to run away and yet the bible these are not parables the bible says 10,000 by thy right side, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Hallelujah. Exceeding great and precious promises. Exceeding great and precious promises. Let's look at one last one. Job 36 and verse 11. Job chapter 36 and verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in this prosperity that many people are looking for, that people kill for, that people tell lies for. The Bible is saying the secret is that if they obey and serve him. Now, most people don't read that first line. They just jump to spend. I must spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure hallelujah so let me recap that the believer in christ has been given all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ you are not about to be given it is a spiritual reality but because we exist in the body are we together we need to understand the spiritual system that translates realities to be true here and now remember my example on the check again so you can carry that check all your life for that check to become true you need the bank are we together and probably your card or your atm you see that now so for the spiritual reality to be true in your life there are other supporting tools that you need number one you need the ministry of a teaching priest you need the ministry of a teaching priest a man a woman of god mandated with the responsibility of unraveling and explaining scripture unto you the same way you hold the check and as powerful as that check is no matter the millions written there you are the mercy of the bank and an account officer the account officer may not be as wealthy as you, but he is mandated with the responsibility of receiving that check and making a deposit through it to your account. And you ignore that account officer, you will stand there with that check only as a potential. Are we together? The ministry of the teaching priest. This is the reason why God plans us in the house of God, in local assemblies such as this. You can imagine that thanks to the man of God and thanks to this great church, many people are having an opportunity to hear this now. And on the strength of what you are hearing now, you will walk because grace will be released to walk in keeping with what you are hearing. And then your life suddenly will change. Are we together now? You will need the teaching priest, Jeremiah 3.15. The assignment of a teaching priest or a pastor is found here, very clearly written. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with what? Knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. Medical people tell us that you are what you eat. Is that true? So if you are fed with quality spiritual knowledge and understanding you will grow and be transformed to reflect the kind of spiritual meal that you are serving 
that immediately implicates us if you're a man or a woman of God here this already is a challenge that we must stay with God to make sure and vet and verify the kinds of meals that we're serving God's people with there is something called malnutrition is that true malnutrition means that you are having insufficiency of certain uh, what they call it now Bible vitamins minerals and all of that and there is a way you can eat so much and yet you are not healthy because you are eating rubbish am I right on that so that one is not lack of food is that you are you are eating but so many out of the, the portion of what is useful is not even there you can eat your way to the grave is that true for such believers the Bible says ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth so you find it spiritual energy being around programs conferences but you cannot measure it against any constructive growth let me show you something here Acts chapter 20 we'll read verse 20 then we'll jump to 27 and 28 this is a charge to everybody but since this doubles this morning as a charge to ministers of the gospel I just thought to bring this to that anyone who is a true shepherd a teaching priest a man of God a woman of God in whatever ministerial capacity you occupy you are mandated by God and by the oath of your office to see to it that you bend over backwards if need be to serve God's people with truth and light that builds them Acts 20 20 and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but have shown you and have taught you publicly and from house to house verse 27 for I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole or all the counsel of God the last verse now really you can stretch it from 28 to 32 but then the verse of emphasis and for the sake of time we'll just look at this he said take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers what is the assignment to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood to feed the church of God not to play games not to make noise not to waste their time to feed the church of god which he had purchased with his own blood are we learning now that means every service should leave you wiser every service should leave you brighter in the spirit because when you it's impossible for light to dwell within you and then you are darkness no hallelujah if you cover if you use your phone or a touch light and you use a, a, any material at all and cover it and light it that material will become enlightened because of the light that is are, are we together now has that happened to you that you cover a material and then you light even if it's a dark material it will be forced to glow because of the light that is within it why then are many believers not able to walk in the reality of these spiritual blessings if it is true that in Christ we now have a new and living way if it is true that in Christ we have access to these blessings that by them we demonstrate and we validate the reality of this eternal life we have received why do many believers in spite of these vast and true provisions live defeated lives live lives that do not represent the glory and the power the grace of god hallelujah let me answer that because the truths of scripture need to be engaged with knowledge with understanding and with faith to deliver to the life of the believer the truth of scripture unattended to is like a seed that has not been put in the ground don't worry I'll, I'll, you will write but just listen we have great farmers here Africa Nigeria we are farmers we are people who have an advantage of a good soil are we together 
and how many of you know that no matter how precious your seeds are even if they've been genetically modified all the you know the advantages put there provided that seed is left in your hands it cannot become a harvest am i right it is the farmer's responsibility to pick that seed and plant it in a good soil the parable of the sower teaches us that the quality of the seed alone does not determine harvest it was the same seed that was put in four kinds of soils am i right on that yes and it produced for some it pro in fact three of the soils it did not really produce anything sustainable and then even among the good soils there were three kinds of results 30 fold 60 fold and a hundred fold hallelujah so the word of god is that good seed but it's largely fallen on bad soils bad ground and you see for the soils that produce the bible says they are those who heard and understood it is understanding that makes the soil of your heart productive understanding not the presence of the seed understanding now let me guide you through three steps that are responsible for converting spiritual realities and to make them manifest in your life i guarantee you by the integrity of scripture that if you believe and understand what i'm about to show you your life will translate for some of you within the shortest time possible into a sign and a wonder you believe that say amen, amen. number one what do you need what is the first step that is responsible for converting these blessings converting spiritual reality to be true here and now in the life of the believer number one you need the knowledge of the spiritual provisions that are available in christ this is the first thing you need the knowledge you need to know the spiritual provisions that are available in christ you need to know to have the knowledge of the spiritual provisions that are available in Christ. What has God said concerning you? That is your responsibility to find out in scripture. Genesis to Revelation is like a garden that gives you the liberty to walk through it and piece together all the vast promises, the blessings that have been apportioned to the saints in Christ. Teaching how to engage light now. Number one, the knowledge of the spiritual provisions that are available in Christ. As touching your health, as touching longevity, as touching your finances, as touching your dominion over principalities and powers and over the vicissitudes of life. For instance, the Bible says, we know that all things work together. Is that true? for the good of them that love the lord and those who are the called according to his purpose that means no matter what happens in my life i may not understand the details but surely the end for me must be peace jeremiah 29 11 i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end believe us for as long as we remain in ignorance as to the spiritual provisions that have been afforded us in Christ and through Christ, we will continue to endorse defeat perpetually in our lives. That means every believer must be on a journey searching out through scripture and of course through the ministry of the teaching priest. You need to know what is available in Christ. Almost everybody here, I presume, has been in a position where you are served a buffet hallelujah several meals and you are at liberty to now choose any intelligent person would take a minute or two to go around and find out what is there so that you don't overload your plate with something and find out there is another compliment that can make the meal better you are not in a hurry your plate is yours your spoon is yours and sometimes you walk through it ah this is beautiful just when you thought you, you are done they bring another one and so you walk through it the awareness helps you to know how to combine what you need am i right on that so you need to pay the price this is like a spiritual buffet and you need to walk through it what has god said concerning my health my children my life okay i come from a family where 
people do not rise and they are not great i hope you know that that information got to you how did it get to you that you believed it how did you get to know either through pain or experience you have come to a point where you know that okay people do not give birth in this family or people do not rise or people do not stay in marriage or nothing good comes from this family you are aware of those things now you must be aware of what christ has done too are we together now that we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation because light is about to come in the midst of darkness and the bible lets us know that once it is true light darkness does not comprehend it so my example again of the buffet you walk through it and you can pick every blessing in christ and know how to engage it with understanding that is the first key you must have knowledge most believers are ignorant as to the promises of god most believers are ignorant please look up please look up there is a lot of a, a superstitious approach especially to christianity in africa we believe that god will come through for us just because we are whipping up sentiments sentiments of tears sentiments of whatever it is god is touched with the feelings of our infirmities but he only responds to his word let me repeat that again god is touched with the feelings of our infirmity is called compassion but he's he only responds to his word God, will you watch my life like this? That is not enough to attract his attention. He is touched, but there is a system already created. And if you do not engage it, if God really wants to show you mercy, he will shorten the distance between you and understanding by bringing a man of God to midwife that distance. Are we together now? So every time you come to church, see it as God answering your prayer. That you are saying, God, how long? And God says, there is something wrong with your understanding, but I will shorten your journey by bringing you closer to a vessel that can help you understand. Hallelujah. So when we invite people to church, it's not just because we want the spaces filled up, that we're giving an opportunity for more people to be able to experience the reality of this great, exceeding great and precious promises. Say knowledge. One more time, say knowledge. I submit to you that reading just one verse per day uh, as, as sincere as that is is better than nothing but you will not become strong in the spirit that way you need to discipline yourself and you see technology has provided an a profound advantage for us you literally can go online the promises of God enter and there are people who have labored there are books that have been written already are we together whether in audio format audio visual format or text format you will find it already there for you 100 scriptures 200 scriptures 50 scriptures if i ask you what makes you believe that the altars that destroyed people in your family will not come for you you say no they can't come based on what you see how believers think no they know me now they should try it and while you are saying that you see are we are we together don't act like that you are not a christian if you act that way you are just being bold for nothing and there are many people who have done that bold face for nothing to their detriment the basis of the believers confidence is what god has said and what is written are we together no devil will touch me i'm still listening based on what they know me no you are not speaking you are, you are still not speaking scripture they know you means what are we together i will not die because it is written now you are speaking the language of faith now you are speaking like a believer with understanding you may be going through storms and challenges now and you are smiling if i ask you why are you smiling in the midst of the storm you say, what will i do you are just a, a sincere nigerian you are not yet a christian you are not speaking like a christian a christian will always reference his action to scripture because that is the basis there must be a scriptural basis for what you are doing 
Okay, why are you rejoicing in spite of the fact that you just lost a loved one? You just lost a job. It looked like things are not working. Your health is being challenged. And then you now give me certain scriptures like rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Scripture number two, count it all joy, brethren, when you go through diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces patience. Are you seeing now? The believer should always defend his state at any given time and at every given point with respect to what is written and what God has said. Hallelujah. You do not have a child till now and yet you are rejoicing and even buying baby clothes. What gives you that confidence? Then you take us to Genesis 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had spoken and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. He visited Sarah as he had said. God has said it so I know he will visit me. That becomes the basis of your confidence. The difference between foolishness and faith is that faith is based on what God said. Because based on action, they all look the same. Are we together now? How do you walk around Jericho seven times to bring a fence down? If you see your relative walking around your backyard seven times, would you call a doctor? Now imagine a whole army. And then they are blowing trumpets and walking around. I'm sure the people in Jericho said, who oh, that will, will never end. You mean these guys have been so insulted by God like this? Only for the seventh shout and that fence collapsed. Because the jealousy of God is behind everything he says. It always looks like it will not happen till it happens. Are we together? So why do you think you will not be poor? I'm hard working. I graduated with first class. That is a good reason but not good enough. If the world you were living in was a kind world where meritocracy will have its cause at all times, then you can give that as a reason. But the Bible says, now we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. That someone will look at you just for the color of your skin or where you come from or a vendetta between him and somebody you once knew and you were connected to will decide to punish you transgenerationally. What then becomes the basis of your confidence? You are in an office that you are the only Christian out of many Muslims. What gives you room to believe that you will even rise to a managerial level? Now you tell me that Daniel in Babylon was exalted and he reigned through the dispensation of three or four kings. You are speaking like a believer. Please everybody shout it, say it is written. I want you to enter your spirit, say it is written. Say God said. This must be your approach. The moment, the moment you want to stand true and stand confident, don't just stand on emotions. What makes you believe that 2023 will not be like 2022? Don't worry, we are still in August. You will be shocked that December will reach and it will still look like last year. And next year will still look like the year before. Your deciding factor is first this knowledge. I know what God has said. 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 There are many people claiming to be matured believers and yet they are completely ignorant. God does not play politics. He will not manipulate your way into this thing. This is the prescribed protocol. It starts with the knowledge of these promises. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The knowledge of the promises. Man of God, what gives you confidence that ministry will thrive in Lagos? What gives you confidence that the members that love you and come to you now will still be there after five years knowing that the heart of man is desperately wicked what gives you the basis to believe that you will be consistent and to grow in ministry in a world where people can say become king over us today and say crucify him tomorrow apostle my church is located in a very good place you have to be blind to not see it there Unfortunately, that does not work with the world of men. Are you getting blessed? 
my dear sister what gives you the basis of confidence that you will raise children that will be kings and queens and will serve God I know my children are blessed yes but what is your basis I'm not an evil person where did they get that from the question is where did Cain get his attitude from are we together show me the scripture that you know that becomes the basis of your confidence that your children will be taught of the Lord and great will be their peace hallelujah I hope you know that Judas was born by a woman is that true I hope you know that wicked heathenistic kings were born by women and as at the time they were babies you would never imagine they would grow to become such wicked people the heart of men it is a risk to live your life on cultural sociological sentiments you must get your life to line up on scripture so back to the man of God I'm speaking to that you know that in the name of Jesus everything that you lay your hands to do is it prospers and that Jesus commissioned you as a man of God is that true yes he commissioned you John 15 16 you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. This becomes an anchor scripture. I have been ordained and sent not to go and be a noise maker, not to be, you know, a, a, a drop of water in the ocean, but to go and bear fruit. I expect to bear fruit in ministry. Hallelujah. If we pray and I say amen and you say amen and I say our prayer has been answered, what makes you believe what you said has been answered? Because you said amen? No. Amen does not answer prayers. Now, you get to scripture. The Bible says, and this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will, is that true? that he heareth us another confidence mark chapter 11 and 24 verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them this is what it means to be a believer that your life is surrounded by the knowledge of scripture you do not take action in ignorance it will be a waste of time before you take action okay you've started your business for instance and God has given you a big space and you are about to start sending a text to customers to say just to let you know that now your whole your 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 items food items can now be found in this store does not bring them no they can even send you text and say you mean it that thing you said you are now doing it congratulations and they will never come to buy anything from you do you know why because except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep rather than saying I have 50 people who assured me that they will patronize me that is a risk you, are, you want to give yourself high blood pressure for nothing you go to scripture and find out in the name of Jesus Christ what does the Bible say as far as my excelling as far as all of these things are concerned and you start looking for scriptures the works of your hands are blessed what grace came upon Jesus that got a crowd from their homes and they came to meet him in the desert what grace came upon Noah's ark that the animals left the wilderness on their own volition? Do you know the stress Noah would have gone through calling the animals? Because their languages differ. The same way the languages of your customer differ. Rather than just believing that they will come based on sentiment, you will access that hear ye him anointing. The grace that can rest upon a man and compel people from the highways and the byways and to bring them to patronize what God has given you there is a more superior approach that translates to victory do you believe what I'm sharing with you so the first key when you want to engage light is that you must press for knowledge the knowledge of the promises the knowledge of these spiritual blessings 
in heavenly places let's go to number two very quickly the second key very quickly is you must press to know the conditions you must press to know the conditions connected to the manifestation of the promises the conditions connected please write this down and do not forget the conditions connected to the manifestation of these blessings these promises every promise in scripture has a condition connected to it why does god put conditions to promises so that it will never look like he's forcing it on you conditions activate the power of your will so that you can choose to accept or choose to reject as many as received him that means not everybody will receive him and he will respect it you can choose to say jesus i have listened to your salvation plan and as an act of my will i reject you he will respect you only that you will go to hell hallelujah do you know you can choose as an act of your will to end your life now by just standing in front of a running train and except by the intercession of someone you will die truly you decided there are people who decided that today i want to die and they really died and god was watching on the throne most people do not know the power of the will that god gave man at the expense of your eternal destiny he still left you to choose that with all that i've done for you you can choose to reject me there were two thieves on the on the cross remember one was a foolish thief the other one was a repentant remember the story now yes and for the one who opened and acknowledged that he was a sinner jesus said today you will be with me in paradise you would think you would pity the other one because both of them were dying anyway no the knowledge of the conditions please say conditions the knowledge of the conditions there are conditions connected to every scriptural blessing there are conditions connected to every scriptural blessing there are conditions connected to every scriptural blessing for instance you want to receive an anointing and impartation from a man of God there are conditions the condition is beyond just packaging a seed the biblical conditions for the transference of grace from one vessel to the other is number one honor number two service you see that now there are people who do not have any and yet they want impartations so because you are disturbing the man of God he will just lay his hands and say it is well but the man of God too knows that truly nothing left him to you hallelujah As a minister of the gospel there are conditions that are connected to your rising and your excelling it's a network of promises that make you excel in ministry there is the place of diligence study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth there is a place for relationships he that desires friends must also show himself friendly is that true yes there is a network of possibilities that turn you into a great minister of the gospel. But to every one of those blessings, there are conditions. There are conditions. There are conditions. There are conditions. Most believers know the promises, but they ignore the conditions and they keep crying and say, God, till now. And God says, you will only have the readiness to judge all disobedience if and when your obedience is complete ten lepers meet jesus on the way and then he looks at them and says go and show yourself to the priest and as they got up the bible says while they went they saw that a miracle happened you see that but only one remembered that ah gratitude programs benevolence is sustains kindness let me come back and say thank you and he came back and met jesus the bible said jesus was passing you thought after that instruction he would go he was still there waiting and as soon as they came he said were they not 10 of you where are the other nine meaning he expected something are we together now 
Yes, sir. There are conditions. Conditions connected. You want God to favor you. There are conditions to favor. People just say that favor is unmerited. That's not entirely true. I've proven it again and I've shown you from scripture. Proverbs 13, 15. Good understanding procured favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. It takes good understanding for you to have favor. What is favor? To command the desire of people, compelling them to show you unusual kindness, to grant you unusual access, and to give you or show you unusual acceptance. That is favor. And it's not just about prayer alone. There are principles that make for favor. Number one is that to the degree to which you are valuable, you stand a greater chance to be in favor. You see that now? Favor responds to value. You can pray favor-provoking prayers. You can know and understand relationships and it can help enhance favor. So there are many people who are saying, I am favored, I am favored. They don't know anything about relationships. They would drive every destiny helper from their life and yet they'll say, God, why is favor not locating me? You've heard me give this example. There are unbelievers who will travel from anywhere to anywhere to celebrate the birthday of a two-year-old son of a CEO somewhere. Let's be honest. So is that baby the mate of that man? He left his busy schedules and came and you see him play. Baby, how are you? Is it, is it really the baby he came to play with? He understands that favor is relational. That everything multiplies on the basis. Right there in that birthday ceremony, the CEO will look at him and say, By the way, come. That contract we are about to discuss, you know, we did not finish. There and then. Whereas there's somebody shouting behind his house and saying, God, you must come through. There are principles that make these promises become real. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There are many people who desire spiritual power, for instance, but their prayer lives down, fasting life down, are we together? Consecration down, diligence to get knowledge down, forget about genuine power, genuine authentic power, if these things are not there. These are the irrefutable keys if you desire power if you want an answer you must ask a question is that true yes. dr modok will say a question is a seed for an answer if you ask me a question then you are ready you are entitled to an answer i'm saying all of this so that you will ask yourself do i know this exceeding great and precious promises and if you do have i found out listen the responsibility component in your christian work must never be ignored what has god said to do to commit him you must know it there are two kinds of knowledge the knowledge of the promises and the knowledge of the conditions the knowledge of the promises and the knowledge of the conditions. The knowledge of the promises, the blessings and the knowledge of the conditions. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity, their days in prosperity, their years in pleasure. You cannot want prosperity and pleasure from God's standpoint and then you are unwilling to obey him and to serve him. No. The Bible says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You are not living to declare the works of the Lord. You are not a worker in church. You are not participating in any pro-kingdom activity. You are putting yourself at risk already. Hallelujah. Honor your father and your mother in the Lord, that your days may be long and it shall be well with you. You have dishonored everybody around you from pastor to parents and you say in jesus name i would not die you are joking you, you see what we keep doing in church we quote scriptures and disobey the conditions no 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 there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth don't expect increase if you do not scatter there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty are we together now? When I found this, it was a missing link in my life. 
and it, it changed my life completely every time i study scripture i don't just study to know the blessing or the promises i also study to find out the condition add this to your study of scripture and you will watch your life change so that when you are praying now most of the prayer is not god when are you going to is it that we are is it that you don't like me just tell me let me know that uh, you did not die for me and, you know all those things we say in the place of prayer of course god is compassionate but i am telling you from a standpoint of intelligence there is always something to do to commit god there is always something to do to commit god i repeat there is always something to do to commit god wise people always ask god what to do not just will he do it he will but what do i need to do good master what do i do to inherit eternal life connecting the promises and their manifestation is that the knowledge of that instruction what do i need to do jericho can come down but whether it will come down or not depends on your ability to hear the condition connected to that victory defeating jericho is true whether jericho you are defeated by jericho or not it does not matter the most important thing is that if you want to command victory over jericho then you must hear from god and know how to walk around seven times you want to cross the red sea that possibility is there but you must know how to take the risk I hope you know bible history tells us that it's not that the, the river just parted and they started walking they had to start walking by faith for the river to imagine if you are the first person <laughs> it's easy to be somewhere in the crowd hey let's go but the first person there like you are the first person to break out of certain things in your family now but you must learn how to walk it's easier to pass through the Red Sea, at least you can swim. What of walking on water? If it be thou, bid me come. And they said, come. And Peter got up. Hallelujah. Those who know this are the ones whose lives become an unending wonder. You will literally see their lives as living epistles. And it will be as though God isolated them and just decided to bless them when god you know when it was time for god to move me to abuja i went to god to pray because i know that as far as dominion territorial dominion and the manifestation of the word of god is concerned i know that god does not fail his word is true whether it will work or not depends on my knowledge of what he has said did he not say everywhere the soles of your feet treads upon that i have given it unto you is that true but he says, I have given you this land. He now said, begin to possess it. That means I must know the dynamics of possessing territories. God has given it to you. Look at how God was sharing lands for people with giants still there. You, this is your own. And he was acting as if there were no giants. Okay, there are giants here, but you for this tribe, this is your own portion. What you would do with the giants to, 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 to you know, are we together now? It is up to you to go back to him again and say, God, you are the one who gave me. You were aware that there were giants. What should I do now with these giants? Most people are aware of the instruction, I mean the, the provision, and then we start running. And you get there and find the giant and say, come, we are waiting for you. And we stand there to say, God, this is unfair. How do you send me to a land flowing with milk and honey, with the anakims there? These were beasts with six fingers and six toes. Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up as once. We are well able. The same God who gives you, the, who tells you about what to do, can empower you to walk in that instruction. Hallelujah. Something you are yet to do is why you are where you are. Something you are yet to do is why you are where you are. Please find a way of believing that I'm not playing games with you. Something you are yet to do is why you are where you are for some of you the something that is left is for you to sing praises and roll before god before the miracle happens for some of you the something that is left for you to do is to thank god for what he has done so far while trusting him for the one he's yet to do something you are yet to do 
for some of you you need to take a seed by faith and with understanding and engage it and say the seed bruises the head of the serpent there is something you are yet to do for some of you you are yet to study to show yourself approved for some of you you are yet to contend for higher levels of impartation but by all means ladies and gentlemen settle it and know this for a fact that something you are yet to do is why you are where you are this is something I had to tell myself and to take responsibility by the Spirit. Is God helping someone? And is God challenging someone? What is number three? So number one, the knowledge of the promises, the spiritual blessings. Number two, the knowledge of the conditions that commit God on your behalf. Are you ready for number three? Number three, the faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they be deliver. Isaiah 1 19 Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19 if ye be willing look at this disturbing scripture he never said go and eat the good of the land he says if ye be willing and obedient that is one word that describes faith if ye be willing and obedient he said ye shall eat the good of the land every land has good but whether the portion will come to you or not depends on your willingness and your obedience faith to engage the promises so that they deliver we consider job 36 and verse 11 remember if they obey and serve him that is the condition connected to spending your years in prosperity your days in pleasure if they obey and serve him hallelujah if i bring a package here maybe some meal in a leather and i say the condition to receive it here is by 12 20 on the dot you run and come up stage here and pick it up the first thing you need is the knowledge that this is even aware that you the, the awareness that this is even there am i right then number two the knowledge of the conditions but you can know the condition and still sit down there and yet not get it out of this crowd the first person who will run in this example now assuming i'm holding it and once it is 12 20 somebody will be discussing the condition i know i am telling you you just go around in fact there is a stairway you climb up and while he's discussing somebody from nowhere will run and come and pick it up and then you say it's not fair i know the blessing i know the conditions but you did not walk in keeping I will only release it to the one who actually gets here physically not the one who talks about getting here are we together write this down please obedience to God's word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform I'll take it again obedience to God's word is the only way please if you're writing on the line only way obedience to god's word is the only way to commit god's integrity to perform you want to see god's power his grace his word manifest in your life it will be at the instance of obedience there's a statement that i wrote down here and i think it's important that we get no amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience no amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience no amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience hallelujah Till today, every time I have the opportunity to fellowship with the Lord, 
and study scripture and in the place of prayer I am asking him Lord what is the next level of my life what is the next level of ministry the moment he tells me the next thing I ask him thank him for that one and I say Lord what is the role I have to play this is responsible Christianity what is the role that I have to play and God will say your own role is to make sure for instance serve the people with truth wake up and learn and study I will not bring people to you and you will teach them nonsense and waste their time I love you but I love them too you see that so for as long as I obtain grace and I'm studying I am partnering with God you see your faith is your partnership with God to make his promises good in your life obedience is your partnership with God to make his promises good in your life There is nothing God cannot do. The only challenge is most believers are in ignorance, ignorance of his promises. They think God lied when he said it is finished. Or number two, ignorance of the conditions desired or required to engage those promises. And then the grace and the faith to take actual steps. God can speak to you for instance you can be praying and say Lord what is the key to the next level of my life and God can tell you the key to the next level of your life is to open a business in the mainland and in the island that can be God's instruction and while he's saying it you may not have one naira to know that God has said this you go and now get scriptures everywhere the sole of your feet treads upon you see you have now positioned yourself with scriptures. Lord, what is the condition? How is this going to come? And you journey through scripture. How did people who have nothing, how did resources enter their hands? You go to look at Egypt. Egypt was broke for 430 years and in one day abundance entered their hand. How did that happen? What makes an empty hand to have plenty? Exodus 3 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty now you know your next prayer point hallelujah yes and then you know that relationships are the greatest platform for transferring anything from one person to the other and then you begin to pray lord this destiny help us in the name of jesus i am valuable but the person to identify my value and to honor me like the wine presser begin to bring them to my life this is intelligent and responsible christianity and then you take a step of faith you come around the mainland and at least try to identify a store you go to the island you identify a store and you say lord i have found a place i cannot take any step but just to let you know that i believe you enough you will marvel and wonder at the miracle that will happen somebody will get up and say i was sleeping yesterday and the lord gave me an instruction that you are about to do a project he said i should stop when you come to testify in church people look at you as if you are just stage managing it but the truth is that those who know how how to walk by faith never are never bankrupt of testimonies we can spend all day and all night here and I will tell you miraculous things that God has done in my life and in the life of several people who have dared to believe him God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent God is showing someone in this conference the missing link that it is not as if God is unfaithful or unrighteous. No, no. It is that we have not understood the way we convert spiritual blessings. Forever I remain aware, you see that, that everything I desire to happen in my life is already finished in Christ. If it is not finished in Christ, there is no basis for asking for it. Because the only platform for your asking, especially for the New Testament believer, is Christ. Alongside that which he has done. There is nothing you cannot. There's no mountain. If 
Forget about your current situation. Everybody started from somewhere. Yours is to believe him. When you do, the next thing is to find out what are the conditions connected. What are the conditions connected? Hallelujah. This is what I believed about myself. Even when I was in one room. When I read in scripture that I'll be exalted above all the nations of the earth. I believed him. I really did. I believed him. And I was not ashamed of my growth and my transition. I made up my mind that I believe him. Because God is not a man. I remember many, many years ago, I was sitting somewhere in Zaria. I had never entered a plane in my life. And I saw a plane passing. And I remember the Lord speaking to me. And said many people enter the plane for many reasons but my word will put you in that way. it's true this is not about flying it's about what god can do there is someone you are sitting down right now locked up with prophecies god has told your parents they will not die till they see god lift you and you are you are you are interrupting what god has said because you have refused to believe him there is a man of God here. God is telling you that this domain called Lagos, don't say there are plenty churches. It's none of your business. Yours is what God has said that he's doing with you. Hallelujah. I believe God. I do. I do. When I found the key, I began to practice responsible Christianity. God, you would do it. That's wonderful. But that is just consolation. Believe me. Hallelujah. The Lord told me something that he told Joshua. I remember three or four years ago, I was preparing for my birthday and the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me and he said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. When he said that, I believed him that today I will begin to magnify you before the nations. When he said that, I first received it and I prayed. And I said, Lord, you are able to lift. Show me what I need to do. Not, oh God, thank you. I know you will do it. And then you go around bragging and say, I know what God told me. And your life will be left in shame and disappointment. And people will say, this noise you have made now. And you will misrepresent God through pride in ignorance. Most people have brought reproach to themselves and to the name of the Lord. They come out and they shout, God said this. It's true, he said it. But if you do not know the conditions and you do not engage it by faith, you will marvel and wonder at the kind of disappointment that trails your life. Hallelujah. This man standing before you by the privilege of God's grace, I have seen the hand of God. I have stood before kings. I have stood before heads of states. I have stood before nobles like God said. I don't say it to brag. I'm inspiring someone God is too serious to play with you. God is too serious to be joking and playing games. It's just that most of us do not know that when God speaks, he really means what he's saying. Hallelujah. The performance is only for them that believe and act in faith. Them that believe and act in faith. Them that believe and act in faith. There are many people today trusting God for financial resources for many things. And if you tell them, let me show you the pathway, they will say, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a serious person. And, and yet the result is not there. You see, let me tell you, if the result is not there, just humble yourself and learn. Humility does not kill. 
our world is full of a lot of arrogance in the midst of ignorance one thing you cannot disprove is results hallelujah you may have heard my testimony one time i was talking to a man and you know the man was in a serious situation economically and i was trying to lovingly just share with him to say sir would you consider approaching it this way this way this is what the word of god says and the man said no he said do you know what it means to take care of two children and i looked at him with compassion in my heart he said this man will kill himself for nothing and blame god see the person who is in a hole and someone who is outside watching is in a hole and he's not agreeing that i'm in a hole and you are saying i can help you out this is the state of many believers i hope and i pray that those that are here seated are not part of those people that when you hear his voice you know for someone as you are hearing me that prophet in you is saying this is the key it's time to manifest that glory and that grace that apostolic grace that sign and wonder that god has ordained you to be that kingdom financier that captain of industry it is true that his light can come and it can shine in darkness it's up to you to argue it explain it away or believe it with childlike faith and watch the god of wonder arise and surprise you as for me i've made up my mind that this word must work in my life and i'm about to prove to a generation by the spirit that god is not a liar it may take time but yours is to press in truth and watch the god of heaven surprise you in ways that you cannot imagine i do not know any man who has been lifted by god who has ignored the knowledge of the promises of god i do not know any man who has been lifted by god who has ignored understanding the conditions connected to divine promises to make them true in his life ladies and gentlemen i i sincerely sympathize with your pain and any setback you may be having in your life but i submit to you by the authority of scripture wishing and attracting sympathy will only comfort you sociologically but will not change that situation one day ego better is a mediocre consolation it will not work that way the secret to change is engaging light for as long as you keep discussing darkness this room is dark I think we'll do something about it darkness remains there the one the one who does not even talk and yet is fixing a bulb and making sure he puts it on is the one who will have that room lit neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but upon a lamp stand so that it will give light to everybody in that place you can engage light in every aspect of your life the word of god is full of testimonies of men and women who engage this light god spoke to them they believed him they found out the conditions attached they engaged it with understanding can i tell you when you see a man who is determined to follow this protocol of engaging the light no matter what is not working in their lives i am telling you you just keep watching you will watch with your own eyes the way they begin to triumph in experience from one level of victory to the other our fathers have taught us this they have demonstrated it with their own lives hallelujah praise the name of the lord i remember i was one of on one of my trips i had the privilege to go to one of the redeemed campgrounds and when i saw the vast campground that they bought i said my god this scripture that wherever the sole of your feet treads upon that thing is true whether it works for you or not is not an issue you see while you are there blaming god there are people saying thank you jesus because the word is working are we together yes if you buy a bottle of coca-cola or any of this drink and you try to use your teeth to open it and it's hurting you you'll be blaming the company you were not supposed to use your teeth to open it 
just because you don't know how you see that you can hurt your teeth even break your teeth and you are angry what wicked people how can they make this this uh, this top so hard like this and you try and try and try you see if someone watches you he will hate that company because you say how can they be so wicked to package such a nice product that way and then you will see a little boy come with something called an opener am i right on that and just push it and then it's up and you stand there it's up to you to argue well it's just an exemption or to learn a lesson and say next time your teeth was not meant to be that it worked once does not mean that's the way it works god just showed you mercy and your teeth opened it once one day you will try it and it's blood that will come out you see that but for the person who has an opener you are not afraid of how many bottles you have to open because the opener does not get tired the opener does not feel pain. This is how certain people have laid hold on eternal life. They have mastered the art of walking with God. No matter what instruction he gives them, they know the formula already. Believe his promises, believe the conditions, engage by faith. Leave the rest to God. Just saying, God, you said it and I believe it honestly. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but it does not settle it. It is what he said that you believe you understand what he has said and the conditions to engage it then you obtain grace from god and walk in keeping obediently fulfilling the conditions that engage god now you can go to bed and watch the god of heaven arise for you apply this to any area of your life and watch this god visit you and surprise you this is what we have done with our lives with childlike faith and have continued to transit from one level of grace to the glory of God. And it is only the beginning of greater things to come. With this childlike faith, we have seen the sick healed. With this childlike faith, we have seen nations change. I told you about years ago when God gave me an instruction and said in the future, ministries will no longer have to sell CDs and the rest. I was in the place of prayer. And he said, because technology will, will grant access, a time will come when teachings and messages, information will literally be free online. This was many years ago. And he said, take your audios, put it online, and my angel will take it to the nations. This is how I will announce you. He was telling me that in one room, and with childlike faith, not knowing what the future looks like, seeing it today the other side of obedience look like you were just lucky there is no luck in it hallelujah and by that one instruction i don't know what would have happened to my life if i did not obey you see obedience to god's instruction does not carry the same value all the time there are certain instructions if you obey 20 years of your life is what will or disobey 20 years of your life is what will go for that disobedience believe me when i tell you hallelujah there are instructions that god is already giving me now for the future and for me my own is just to pray and say lord grant me the grace the grace to obey you to the latter the grace to obey you to the latter it's the same thing when god moved us to abuja getting there to say lord you are the one who has brought us what do you need to do do this do that you've heard my story god gave me an instruction by the map of abuja the map of nigeria the map of africa and the map of the world and pray on it that's it every night with childlike faith you come and see me looking like a herbalist father in the name of jesus who spoke and i believe if you are full of yourself you will never obey god you will you need to become a child because there are times god will say drop your cv in your house on the ground lock your door and dance lord i cannot dance that's the priest to god you are dancing you are, you are not you are not recording yourself to put on youtube so i mean who who cares and you dance like a fool and in the midst of that god will say you did this to obey me I will see to it that you never have to cry again and you will see doors open hallelujah i remember when we got there i was i'd sent a few people to go and look for a place for us because with the visions that i saw i said which auditorium now would be able to contain this size of people in abuja abuja has always been home 
but where will you find except you build it by yourself but i do not know any rented facility that will be able to do that and where would it be in fact i, will, I remember we had sent we saw a place that they, they you know they called my attention to but the amount you would need to that's when you will know whether you you are really whether you are just talking all this thing or you love god and you know members are wonderful people may god help you your faith will walk and we are backing you up in prayer but you are the, finally you are the one who who flogs it out until a miracle manifests i think i was in enugu when when they had met the man initially he said no 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 pastors and churches destroy facilities and i'm not ready i said leave him just leave him. we know what to do it was in enugu true story the man was sleeping and when he said he had the voice of god and the lord told him he said these people is a move is a prophetic move and the guy got up i went to go and greet him i was not even going to discuss the issue of venue just to go and greet him and say i'm meeting you for the first time there and there he called all the managers we sat down and we discussed the rest to god be the glory <laughs> hallelujah do you believe what i'm telling you yes, sir. there is nothing you cannot do there's no mountain If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track friend God to give you to the world. You're not a man to stop doing it now. Hallelujah. Whatever he tells you, he will make out of you. Please believe him. If God tells you you will stand before presidents and kings and nations, do not look at your lowly estate. Believe him. Believe him. Are we together? Yes, sir. Believe him. Even if you don't believe him, ask him to help your own belief. It's more sincere than disobedience. It's better to say, Lord, I don't know if I have the faith to believe you. Many years ago, God granted me an instruction he gave me an instruction and he said, one day I will send you. You've heard the story. And I would, he sent me and I went, I remember then to Canaan land. And it was an instruction with a seed, the kind of seed that you know that you are really obeying God. And I got up and went there. When I did what I had to do, the Lord asked me to place my hand on the ground there. And he said, son, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. Right now, God brought you here. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. We're about to pray. Get tired of your current situation and tell yourself no more excuses. Not after this conference. God, you are real. I'm not going to sit down and allow my life to keep mocking and misrepresenting you. You are the God of all grace. You are the God of all flesh. There are things that you have told me and I know that you do not lie. There are things that you have told me. And I know that you do not lie. There are things that you have told me. And I know that you do not lie. You told me in my lifetime I will see my children become great. Lord, I'm ready to see it. Anna the prophetess was in the temple. And God told her she would not die until she sees Jesus. She remained there until Jesus appeared. When he said, she said, ah, finally I've seen the consolation. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. I remember when New Heritage Baptist Church was in the old building. I had the privilege of seeing the faith work that brought this church here. Faith, believing God and taking one step to the other. There is nobody who comes from nowhere. It's a lie. Just because you are not aware when they were transiting does not mean they did not transit. Every king, if it's David, he came from a bush. Obedience transited him until he sat on the throne. Your throne is there waiting for you. 
for some of you it's been there for a long time and God is saying when will you sit there as a king and a priest that you are there is a praise that your life should bring dear prophet of the living God when will you obey God to lift you so you start speaking his counsel to the nations dear man of God do you not know I was teaching our people that there are many destinies connected to your loins if you do not obey God to manifest you are not the only one who will suffer all the people who have been destined imagine the healing evangelists that should rise from their obedience you don't obey God there are many people who will go down the grave that should not be the will of God prophetic psalmists imagine the songs of worship that the body of Christ is still waiting for that should come from your believing God I'm not talking of special numbers I'm talking of songs like ladders in the spirit that can help men rise how about kingdom financiers there are some of you here you've been saying it forever one day i'll have resources and you are not committing god you are not doing the things that will make god to manifest on that wise you are not diligent you are not learning the laws that bring empowerment you've not taken time to study god's prophetic program it doesn't work that way the lord put this conference ladies and gentlemen so that we will be determined now you know your assignment is to go back and find the truths lord what have you said concerning my life what have you said concerning this vision i challenge you yesterday write the things that are not working in your life and let that be your project for the remaining part of this year make up your mind and say no excuses fail honorably but don't keep quiet do not be at ease in the midst of trouble do not be at ease in the midst of darkness believers don't operate that way even if you are in ignorance keep crawling your way forward hallelujah I made up my mind that everything God has in store for me that in my lifetime I will walk in it when I walk with God I don't factor Satan in the equation I I walk with God as if the devil does not exist Lord what are you saying because his empowerment is based on my disobedience and if I obey God, he knows what to do with Satan. Do you believe this? Yes. When the Lord spoke to me and said, there is no nation you go to that will reject you, I believed him. It was up to me to believe him or to argue and say, okay, no problem. Oh God, well, I'm sure you walk out away. No, no, no. I made up my mind as a man of God I said there has to be a way of doing ministry with integrity without manipulating people and doing all kind and playing games there has to be a way out of this thing are we together and I said Lord rather than argue it show me the way and the Lord told me there is a price to pay for authentic ministry it's not a gift it's a reward and I said, Lord, all I need is the grace to pay that price. And by his privilege, we're still paying that price. And look what God is able to do. Ladies and gentlemen, let me challenge you again. There is nothing God cannot do. Shake away unbelief. Because we're about to pray. Shake away unbelief. Lagos is too blessed for you to be crying every day. Please do not feel bad that I'm challenging you. You keep giving. There are people giving all kinds of excuses someone must challenge you to let you know that for as long as you keep giving these excuses you will keep justifying pain and mediocrity and failure the life we've been called into is a life of victory every land has good obedience is what fishes out your portion to give you when they said master we have toiled all night there was still fish in the river the fish just did not come to their boats god knows what it to tell the fish that will bring it from anywhere to anywhere from anywhere to anywhere apostle my own is that there are bills on my head right now i am in debt in a way that if god does not help me i might plunge into depression there is a way out 
go and study how God brought people out of financial situations in scripture. Every time people were in financial situations, it's not business that brought them out. It was the prophetic that brought them out. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. He said, where fell it? By this time tomorrow, the prophet prophesied restoration. Restoration is in the office of the prophetic, not businessmen. He can use that business, go and borrow vessels, and then sell it. He, but let it be at the instance of the prophetic word. Apostle, I've been looking for my land in Lagos and it's not there. It's not true. Your eyes have not seen it, but it is there. There is a portion for you. The Bible says the increase of the earth is for all and that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. When it has to do with land and his blessings, there is no discrimination. The increase of the field is for all. The increase of the field is for all. Man of God, your membership are everywhere. Jesus said, all that you have given me, God gives men, men. He's the one who gives. I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture will be fulfilled there is a place for you in destiny there is an audience that have been designed to hear you and to honor god in your life yours is to believe god alone and with childlike faith that he continues to transit you you are not the first to, to desire visibility there are men who came out from their lowly estate without human manipulations. I can tell you, the man standing in front of you is a testament that when God places something upon your life, there is nothing that can quench your darkness. My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of men The lifter of men Lord, I will hold on through the storm I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men ladies and gentlemen we are going to pray I don't know what you have heard God say to you today but I want you to make up your mind that from today my life must change my life must change financially my life must change ministerially my life must change there has to be an auction from heaven go ahead and begin to pray please make sure you participate in this prayer session we have about five minutes of in Hence prayer is a word and prayer conference. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard. The entrance of his word gives light and understanding unto the simple. Are you praying? Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are going to cry unto the Lord. This mountain where I have dwelt, I have stayed there too long. I have stayed there too long. I'm ready to move to the next level. Open your mouth and cry. Please cry. This mountain where I have dwelt is to have stayed there too long. Please open your mouth and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Someone is praying spiritually. I have dwelt here too long. This level of my spiritual life, this level financially, this level in my career, let your light come and drive away every darkness. Pray for yourself, pray for your children, pray for your ministry. Someone who is angry 
at the dominion and the deception of darkness go ahead and begin to pray the light shineth in the darkness 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 someone pray it's time for the nations to hear your voice it's time for kings to acknowledge the hand of god upon your life is someone praying yes sir yes sir go ahead and pray it's time for the grace is placed upon your life to speak and to speak so evidently that the days of frustration come to an end engaging light for your victory engaging light for your triumph engaging light Father, I am ascending, ascending heights in the spirit, ascending dimensions in destiny. The days of living in fear must come to an end. The days of living in uncertainty must come to an end. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Jesus pray in the name of Jesus pray hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that my portion my prophetic portion in life and destiny I declare that it comes to me open your mouth and pray your portion as far as God's program is concerned your portion as far as increase is concerned your portion as far as God's prophetic program is concerned in the name of Jesus Christ for your church to experience the mighty and marvelous hand of God pray I'm in business with God no death no tragedy no up and down for the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day hallelujah 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 now out of the many kingdom principles that are available i want us to engage just one in prayer the bible says that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper number two 
that every tongue that rises up against you you will condemn he didn't say him you you will use your mouth to condemn therefore in the next two minutes i want you to open your mouth and dethrone anything that has taken the place of god threatening your life threatening your liberty please open your mouth and declare who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel before Zerubbabel thou shall be made plain at the shout of grace grace pray the spirit of delay I come against you in the name of Jesus retrogression I come against you in the name of Jesus go ahead and pray the powers that keep men down in Lagos, that keep men down in this region, I curse you by the God of heaven. The spirit that covers the glory of men, that they do not rise and shine. The Lord rebuke you. Go ahead and pray. Ah, pray, pray. It will give way. I assure you. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold must be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every mountain must come down. Every stronghold. hallelujah in the name of Jesus I feel stirred in my heart to give us one more prayer point hallelujah please hear me there are some of you right now you need the ministry of men like never before John chapter 5 the tragedy of the man at Bethesda is that I have no man you are in Lagos but you are alone you are in business but you are alone you need help but you are alone please if you have not prayed here pray seriously now you are going to open your mouth and declare lord who have you apportioned in this season to hold my hand and help me up i call them forth i call them forth i call them forth go ahead and pray it takes god in partnership with men Someone be serious. Pray. I call for help us. Help us. Sent by God. Help us. Sent by God. Endorse us. Sent by God. Lift us. Sent by God. Professionals. Sent by God. must be someone sent by God to help you to be used by God to wipe away your tears don't keep quiet in August not September not September this August I decree and declare I call upon heaven may they show up may they show up may they show up not September not October not November not December I call upon heaven arise oh God in the name of Jesus help us help us help us help us
Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of God marvelously helped of God marvelously helped of God marvelously helped of God Marvelously helped of God. Marvelously helped of God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We are wrapping up. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible says, Herod stretched his hand to vex certain Jews. And the Bible says they held a guy called James. And they beheaded James. And the believers kept quiet. The angels that came to save Peter were there. But because there was no demand from earth to heaven they were watching as they beheaded James and the Bible says keep that scripture Acts chapter 12 the Bible says they beheaded James the brother of John with the sword read verse 3 the Bible says verse 3 give it to us media and because he saw that it pleased the Jews and the church kept quiet he proceeded further this is what evil does when you keep quiet it will first attack your health and you keep quiet it proceeds further satan always starts at a point but he does not desire to remain there no he starts with your firstborn and you say no it's just teenagers behaving he proceeds further anytime you keep quiet he proceeds further and then the bible says verse five now let's jump to verse five it says peter was kept in prison but this time around the church said will not keep quiet again he said but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him if they started that prayer when they held James he would not have died there are many things we are saying is the will of God and God is saying I have no hand in it it is your refusal to pray and your refusal to comply can I give you one more prayer request Lord anything every tragedy that has come to my life as a result of ignorance or evil I command a sevenfold restoration a sevenfold restoration go ahead and pray oh I thought it was you walking now I see that it is the devil walking and Lord I demand by faith a sevenfold restoration restoration of my job for losing my loved ones to ignorance lord restore lord restore for losing my finances losing my business lord restore yes restore restore oh god until my life becomes consistent with your will Declare restoration. The years that the kanka worm has eaten, the years the palma worm has eaten, the years the caterpillar has eaten, Lord, restore. Restore my joy. Restore my fire. Restore my spiritual life. Restore the influence, the name you have given my family. Lord, restore. Restore. Restore that mantle that you once placed upon my life that left through carelessness restore my spiritual life restore the gift of the spirit that was once at work in my life
for in Jesus mighty name we are praying in Jesus mighty name we are praying hallelujah we have a final session this evening and if I were some of you except it is necessary if you stay far just find somewhere to camp around and be flogging it with destiny before evening you get a meal just something to refresh yourself and refuse and say Lord tonight I am making it my not our night tonight is my night that you place a demand the Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God hallelujah tonight we're going to have time I'll just show you one key and then we'll be praying I'll minister to the sick and we'll be ministering the power of God age-long captivities that have tied family members that have tied people or except except it is not of the devil but provided it is of the devil it must bow finally in the name of Jesus Christ and for some of you you may need to call your loved ones especially those who are within reach those who might be outside of the nation tell them to connect we know what we are going through tell them and say God has brought a solution they should connect the media can give the links of the church the, you know the platforms and listen carefully and be prepared to receive and come with your prayer request don't say I've been writing prayer requests has it been answered if no write it again and come with faith tonight among the many things that will be happening is that God is going to be imparting graces for some of you these graces that were once working in your life that you lost as a result of prayerlessness or carelessness or wrong friends or wrong ministerial patterns God is going to be restoring authentic genuine graces Amen. hallelujah you have a loved one in the hospital come with your photos by uh, as a point of contact you are trusting God maybe some document if it's within your power you can reach come with it and let something rest upon it for God's sake that you will return back and you will know that there is a God that sits in heaven hallelujah and as you come tonight I like you to see in the mind of your spirit every luggage that has refused you from moving fast that God is going to be losing that chain and it will fall off here tonight are we in agreement on this so before the service even starts you should be seated and already praying in the spirit Lord visit me if you are a man of God father it's time for my ministry to encounter genuine grace to rise you are a business person that spirit that has surrounded my business that will not give me visibility it must give way today hallelujah as for now may the Lord bless you may the Lord honor you as you begin to press for knowledge as you begin to press to know the conditions connected to actualizing divine promises and as you obtain grace to walk in faith and obedience may you begin to see the wonders of God in your life for in Jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed give Jesus a hand clap